victory against the Michigan Wolverines. We got the job done, advanced to the Elite Eight, Jay Wright's fifth Elite Eight, Villanova's 15th all-time Elite Eight. An excellent performance capped off by another clutch column three, another amazing performance by Jermaine Samuels. We'll get into all of that. This is going to, again, be a pretty quick hitter podcast Many of you were on the Villanova Twitter spaces that I just hosted where my phone died to end it unceremoniously, um, but it had gotten a little bit off the rails there. So we're, we're, it's, it's, it's that's, 1240. It's that's 1240. kind of how this podcast is going to be too. We're not going to edit it. We told Brian, we're like, it's late. Just put the file up. There's going to be no fluff. It's just raw talking, raw emotion because we fucking won back that's in right. the Elite Eight. Fucking go, Rob. Are you drinking anything still, or are you done drinking for the? Uh, I had probably seven tequila sodas at the bar, so I am back in my apartment now. I've eaten about six chocolate chip cookies. It's a long way of saying I'm not drinking anything at the moment. I do have a milkshake here. It's a protein shake. It's pretty there, cool. There you go, real, real, yeah. real fit guy there. Real, real fit guy. Fit guy. Well, I, mean, I don't know. I don't know how fit I can be after seven tequila sodas and. Well, when you cooking, drink but... core power at like <laughs> at twelve forty at night after after drinking seven tequila sodas, it kind of comes off. I mean, it just comes off a certain way. No, you're, they're just, you're they're okay just, with. They're just really tasty. They're okay, just really tasty. Just, uh, I, on the other hand, am drinking Woodford Reserve. Um, I don't know why, but I am. That's what I'm drinking. <laughs> Happy um, to be nearby. <laughs> yeah, um, and I also have the. Uh, the final four, the 2018 San Antonio final four championship ticket behind me. Um, another game that we beat Michigan in that you might've heard of. So I, I think so. I think neither so. here nor there. Let's talk about the game because here we are. We are the uh, tied with Duke is the highest seed to win tonight um, because Amazing neither, night. neither Gonzaga nor Arizona could get their jobs done. They both lose Arkansas marches on. Um, and so does uh, Houston, who will be our opponent, but we're going to get into Houston in just a little bit. Let's talk a little bit about the game tonight. Um, I, I want to start with the awards. I, Let's I, do it. Always a good place to start. Fucking right away. Alpha dog, Jermaine Samuels, period. End of story. Again, Jermarch. 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 It's Jer- happening. Jermarch. Arf. Jermarch. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Jermarch was, I mean, he was unstoppable from, from the jump, basically. He came out attacking. I think he must be listening to the podcast because he is now doing exactly what we have told him to do and what we've told the coaching staff to do for the past probably two and a half years at this point. Put the ball on the floor and run by people. And what did he do? He put the ball on the floor and he, I will say this Michigan team had to be the slowest team I've ever seen play basketball. It seemed like our guys were just casually walking by them into the lane, but he just, he got six right off the, right off the jump was a little quiet. And then just second half absolutely exploded 22 and seven, only two fouls again on eight of 13 shooting, just hyper efficient. And when you, Wow. When you consider the defense that he had to play, play and he played like seven guys. It was insane. He it, just was, he willed this team to victory tonight. I mean, Collins, the guy who gets the, he gets the, 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 the shout outs and the accolades and the accolades, but my God, he willed this team to victory tonight. He is without a doubt, the best player for Villanova in the tournament to date. Like, and it's not even close. He's just absolutely on fire right now. And if we see this Jermaine Samuels against now, we know Houston I guarantee we will win without it. Like book it hundred percent. We will win. Boom. If this, if this Jermaine Boom. Samuel shows up on Saturday, book your takes to new Orleans. Cause we are absolutely going. So I got to talk about a couple things here. There was so many things that we did in this game that were really awesome. Uh, first off, I, I, what we, what we did game plan wise against Dickinson, it got him. It, it was basic stuff. It wasn't like crazy stuff. Um, It wasn't like we ran crazy action at him or whatever. We kind of felt the game out and said, okay, throw a double now. Like 
Okay, yeah. don't throw the double here. Okay, let him kind of score the basket here or basically face him up and try and make him uncomfortable here. But the one thing that we did on every possession was, and we do this like as like basic, real basic, good basketball move. We front the post. And if you watch down low, there was a war going on all game long where we were, where, where, in other words, Dixon, Samuels, fucking Caleb was, was, was fighting down there at points in time on a bad switch. We fought through it and fronted the post and they had a hard time getting the ball into him. Um, and a couple of times they threw the ball away because they tried to force it. And so I, I just thought that the, that the game plan that we did, he still got, I think like 15 and 15 or something like that, but it wasn't, he didn't put forth a performance that would have willed Michigan to victory. I actually thought the best player on the floor for Michigan was Eli Brooks. Well, yeah. And Eli Brooks is basically their second best player. I, I agree with everything you said. It was interesting. We talked a little bit about this in the last podcast. We actually did like a little bit of research there. They don't shoot a lot of threes and they're not particularly good at shooting threes when they do. So when Dickinson isn't working, there's not a whole lot else they have to fall back on. And I thought that was pretty apparent. Mm -hmm. Like we had them flummoxed. I will say kudos to them. I thought they played pretty good defense on us. They held us broadly in check for out most of the game and we just missed some shots too, but they had absolutely nothing on offense because they couldn't work it through Dickinson. And then it was just, okay, we'll take some bad shots and you know, we'll miss, God, they missed a bunch of free throws. My favorite thing though is, I was, uh, I was I was going on Reddit after the game, and there were so many Michigan fans who were like, well, you know, if we would have, you know, Villanova, like, this wasn't Villanova winning this game. This was Michigan losing it. We, we missed all these free throws. And, you know, if we actually convert, we missed like 12 of 25, you know, layups or dunks. If we would have made half of those, we won by 20 points. I'm like, yeah, that's not how the game fucking works. Yeah. Like, you, <laughs> that's you, not how basketball you missed, works, guys. You missed them. <laughs> Like you missed uh, them. Before That's we, it. Rob, before Ridiculous. we go too far, are you generally using Reddit as your source of truth for other things like news and other interests that you follow? Uh, no, I'm more of a, a, a QAnon, the one source of truth guy. But yeah, that's uh, not I a source. Back, that's I fall, a club. I fall back on Reddit. Well, it, it, it is a source for me. So keep your <laughs> keep your judgment aside, Brian. <laughs> To be, oh clear, to, to be clear to our listeners here, I do not. All of us oh, joking. <laughs> so let's, let's be very clear here. Yeah, we're not. We're not QAnon people here. Um, uh, okay. All right. Jesus. Wait. We've we've gotten off the rail. I feel like I'm on back on the spaces again. <laughs> so far off the rails. Uh, no. I, look, I, I wasn't too impressed by Michigan tonight. If I'm being candid with you, I think we put forth a B effort in this game. Uh, you know, Jermaine was Jermaine was amazing. Um, Colin was good. Caleb was good. Um, Justin Moore was good, but I, I don't think it was our best effort. I don't think we did a particularly good job attacking them, um, on offense and getting what we wanted to get yeah. done. We made some shots. Um, and, uh, but we, and we made our free throws and we played great defense. Um, our Ken Palm defensive efficiency is up to 24. So the yeah. magic number is 20 to look out for. Um, so we're still on the march in terms of, in terms of improving that Ken Palm uh, D, but the uh, but the thing is that I'll say is I didn't come away like particularly amazed by Michigan. And if like people are like, well, wow, the Big Ten's so good. Well, I don't, no. I don't think so. I don't no, think so. I, no, I mean there there's a reason they were an 11 seed for sure. I agree with all your points offensively. Certainly, it wasn't our best game by by any means. Left a lot to be desired. Some awesome defensive highlights though, for sure, throughout this game. The I think the Caleb block from behind has to be uh, just one of those absolutely awesome moments. Man, we've had so many good blocks recently. It's yeah. really quite exciting. You talk about the block on Diabate, right? Yeah, yeah. It was yeah. so good. Just coming from back. So, boom. Um, that was one that I think Samuels had another one, too. So, uh, definitely a few a few highlights there, which is really nice to see. Let me ask you this. Do you have a Shaq fit man play of the game tonight? Was it like one of the blocks or was it I the think column it, three? No, I think it was the block. I think it was probably the Caleb block. Because I, I don't know. Did they score on that possession? No, I think they scored on that possession. They because they went through a timeout, and then I, I forget. I, I forget at this point. I think they might have, but that was the only one that really stood out to me. Mm -hmm. Slater Slater tried to go for a few uh, man plays and just got absolutely wrecked a couple times. <laughs> I thought I thought Caleb came down with some huge boards in this game. Um, on this basis, someone asked me, like, who was the top three tonight? And I actually excluded more. I, yeah. said, I said Samuels, 
Col- I mean, Sam Moore had like twelve or fifteen points or something 15, like that. Yeah, he's the second leading scorer. Yeah, but but I I didn't get the I didn't get the feel that like, I, I thought down the stretch Caleb made the clutch buckets and the clutch um, and the clutch boards and the block that you referenced uh, to to really c- help seal the deal. Um, but it seems to be a thing though that that big big time blocks happen against Michigan. It does yeah. seem to be a, a recurring theme going back to 2014, 2015, when Javon Pinkston got a big time block late in that game. It was, it was really weird. I, I totally agree. Yeah. That, and obviously 18, one thing I want to talk about, um, which I was, I was texting a little bit about and slacking about as well too, was the foul situation. So this to me was fascinating. Obviously the game, there weren't a ton of fouls called in the game overall, but both Slater and Dixon picked up, I think two in the first half and then Dixon picked up his third. I think they both picked up their third pretty early in the second half. And I said, I was like, Holy shit, this is going to take a coaching masterclass for us to be able to pull this out and kind of manage this foul situation, especially given the fact that Longino was no longer available to us. So what I loved that Jay did was that he kept Dixon in. He basically said, look, you've got three fouls. You've got to play smarter and you've got to do better. And he just kept him in and he was able to play for the next, I don't know, four or five minutes till next media timeout did not pick up that next foul and actually made a few nice defensive possessions and rebounds as well. And there's one thing I read recently. that was basically like uh, made the point of, you know, if you, as a coach, if you're in a situation like that and you're worried about a guy fouling out by taking him out, you have effectively fouled him out. Right. So Jay made the choice. I love the choice. It was a, you know, call it what it was like a little bit of a gamble, but it absolutely paid off. So it was ballsy. It was ballsy. Huge hat tip though. That stretch there. You're talking about the Dixon stretch, right? Yeah. yeah. I mean, he left him in and I thought that was so critical to the game. I I think like a lot of times you say, okay, do we need a guy like a Dixon? Um, Because, because Jermaine has shown the ability to defend down low. Yeah. But because of Slater's foul trouble too, yeah, we then don't have a position, someone to put, like if Samuels has to play the four because Slater's also in foul trouble. So Dixon managing that situation well was was super critical in this game. I agree. Someone brought that up on the spaces actually. Um, and I thought that was really key. Um, we mentioned Michigan's free throws. That was, that was a joke. That would, I mean, Holy I'd be God. totally embarrassed if I was a fan. Like they're, they're talking about, Oh, if we just did this, I'm like, well, yeah. Like maybe tell your team to fucking shoot free throws better. Like, yeah. you, you dumb idiots. Like, it's like, <laughs> like, 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 come on. Like you don't have to be the best free throw shooting team of all time to not, but to like brick, like every free throw in a freaking sweet 16 matchup. Yeah, That's on you. Really uh, weird. I wouldn't, I wouldn't be gloating about that if I was a Michigan fan. <laughs> no, definitely all. not. So, so anyway, oh boy, we got the job done. It was awesome. We're elite again. Um, and I have to say, man, <laughs> I feel like we keep saying this every few games, but like, what a what a ride this program's on. It's crazy, Rob. Oh, I, yes. I, I mean, we we started going to Villanova in two thousand five. We probably, the two of us probably watched kind of dating back into the season prior um, as we were kind of choosing the school and whatever. But like, but like we have now seen in our fandom five elite eights, like crazy in like 15, 16 years um, and 15 tournaments, because obviously 2020 never happened. Um, and that team, by the way, could have been an elite eight team too, but neither yeah. here nor there. Yeah. But like 06, 09, 16, 18, 22, like, crazy five elite eights and that's and that's and by the way like I, i'm going to be on one postseason about the history of villanova basketball because there's a lot of fucking noise out there that it's like villanova basketball is jay wright and like yeah jay wright's obviously overseeing the golden age of villanova basketball i'm not going to sit here and deny that but villanova basketball is 15 elite eights total 20 sweet 16s like this is a program with pedigree so to accomplish a golden age like jay has is an incredible feat. Yeah, no, it totally. You're totally right. And it's, uh, it was funny. I was looking at some of the stats. Oh, they just put up, I'm just watching our highlights on right now. It's so sexy to watch. Um, yeah, I was looking at some of the all time stats for, um, for the Nova program. And I think Nova's basketball program started at, it's like 1920 or something like that. And a lot of the, 
a lot of the blue bloods are, you know, start around like 1900 or so. And it was, it was crazy. I think we're number like, I don't know, 20 or something like that in all time wins somewhere in that thereabouts, maybe it's a little higher. Um, but the, the teams that the programs ahead of us have like 15 on average, like 15 years more than us. So, you know, if you assume we get a few wins a year in those, those 15 year difference, this is basically like a top five, top seven, all time winning program in the history of college basketball. So yeah, your point is spot on. The history goes way back. It's amazing what Jay's done, but yeah, this program has a, has a long, a long life and a long past, a yeah. lot of success. So before we move on to the next uh, segment, which we'll just talk, we'll preview Houston um, here, which we're doing on the fly guys. We're doing it on the fly. We don't have the advanced scout ability on Houston to like go back and through it. I can't, I, I'll be honest and say that I haven't watched a ton of AAC basketball because it's shelved on some dog shit ESPN plus program most of the time, but neither here nor there. Before we get into that, we do have to have a word from our sponsors, which is home fields. Um, and home field apparel, uh, they make some great stuff. A few weeks back, they dropped their Villanova collection. I am wearing one right now. I got Nova nation with the, I, I love this design here, but the old wildcat screeching. It's terrific. Just a terrific design. I wore this for the game Villanova won, So maybe I have to wear it again on Saturday. Who knows? Uh, but if you use the code full 40 F U L L four zero, and you're a first time buyer uh, from home field, you get 15% off your purchase. The clothes are comfortable. They're well-priced. Uh, they're, they're cool designs. They have some throwback stuff. Um, and I just think it's terrific. I love the designs. It's different. It adds a different value to some to like Villanova, um, especially Villanova. Like a lot of the stuff can get tired over time. And I feel like it added a new, le- a new life to some of the, uh, some of the clothing that you can get, some of the Villanova apparel. So check it out. Home field apparel. Um, you go at home field, whatever you want to do uh, at home field apparel. Uh, and you can check out their website and, and go to their Villanova collection. And again, use the code full 40 F U L L four zero. If you are a first time buyer for 15% off at checkout. Okay. Moving right along. We got a game to play on Houston. Saturday for the right to go to the final four. And I got to say, this kind of is like the final boss of Villanova in Texas. We win the national championship in Houston in 2016. We win the national championship in San Antonio in 2018. Now we have to play Houston in San Antonio. Just combining all of the things. It's just, it's just like all of the bosses merging in together. This is like when the Power Rangers get like Megazord. And that's a throw. Megazoid? Megazoid. Wow. Thank you, Brian. Wow. Thank you, Brian. This is all of it coming together. And we got to fucking, we got to fucking play Houston in San Antonio. It's crazy. And again, in this game, we have the story of this game is that Houston is an underseeded five seed. Now, now, call a spade a spade a spade. They play in a conference that's not that good. I was going to say, I, they, ha- they haven't beaten anyone well, until the, the tournament. Well, well, and then, and then they've beaten people. <laughs> that, that's what I mean. I was, I was literally looking through the schedule, and I was looking at it. I was like, okay, there's no one in the AAC that they played in one that's of note. They, I guess they, they beat Memphis at the last game of the season, so I guess that's something of note. That's another tournament team. But there's nobody else really in here that's a tournament team. They have no other pre-conference wins of note and i was like okay it's interesting well, fine you get a five seed but now you're you get a five seed and you steamrolled wisconsin and you just steamrolled arizona so i i, illinois, I can't really knock illinois, you they illinois, illinois excuse me yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah like I, I can't really knock you at this point i mean <laughs> you seem to be pretty good so yeah. whatever your record said doesn't and seem to matter look they made the final four last year uh yeah. same coach returned a couple turned a bunch of players um the thing is in this game is Ken Palm expects us to lose. Um, Ken Palm has us as one point dogs in this game. I don't, I haven't seen betting lines come out yet. I haven't seen TV times come out yet. Uh, but Ken We're Palm playing at six fifty on Saturday. Oh, Brian, thank you very much. Six fifty on Saturday. That makes us, is that the early game? Yeah. That would yeah. make us the early yeah. game because they're going to play the Duke, um, the Duke, uh, 
Arkansas game, probably at the night game. Uh, okay, that makes sense. So 650 on Saturday Eastern, uh, we're playing uh, we're playing the Houston Cougars. But uh, so they are 32 and five. They're ranked number two in Ken Palm. Uh, so, so they have an eighth ranked adjusted offensive efficiency, 10th ranked adjusted defensive efficiency. They play the slow tempo. So not particularly uncomfortable again for us, although they did go a little bit, they did match Arizona's tempo a little bit. They kind of beat them at their own game in a lot of regards tonight. Um, this is an interesting matchup. They are, um, if we expected Arizona, we expect a lot of length and athleticism. Houston has a lot of length and athleticism, but it's not to the level that Arizona did. So I don't know if they did us a favor by knocking Arizona off because now we have to beat the team that beat Arizona. <laughs> yeah. So, but, and Ken Palm expects us to lose. Ken Palm has us as a one point dog, but basically a coin flip in this game. I was going to say Ken Palm would probably have us expected to lose against Arizona too. Right. So. Uh, by about one point. Yeah. So okay. either so, way, so either way, I, I'm interested to see where the betting lines come up. Oh wait, no, they just updated the stats. Now we're expected to lose by two to Houston because oh, yeah. Go. So now, you, so now, so now we know that. Okay. Um, but, but this is going to be a, a, a really tight, tough game. And, and they have, uh, they have obviously excellent players all across the floor. They have Josh Carlton, Kyler Edwards, Jamal Shedd. Um, they, they are, they are an excellent team that has had a good season again, coming off a of final four berth. So they have tournament experience, um, in some of the ways that we do, and maybe even more, more so because it's more recent. Uh, so uh, it's a, yeah, this it's is just, a tough it's game. A, it's a super experienced team. They've yeah. got like four of their, their top four scorers are all seniors at this point. And it's a pretty balanced team too. Like top scores, 14, 13, 12, 11 points per game. And then you've got shed is just under just a hair under 10 points a game. So a lot of people are contributing and a lot of people are playing a lot of minutes, but look, if I'm to your point about, you know, the size thing, if I'm picking, sure, like, I guess I'd rather play a team where the matchup is something that we're probably a little bit more comfortable with. And yeah, we don't have to face a team that has a seven foot one guy and a six eleven guy. We just have to face a team that only has a six eleven guy. Okay, I can deal with that. No problem. The rest of the team really isn't all that big too. Six four, six eight, six five, six one, six one. Like, we can match up with that without too much problem. So, I mean, look, obviously, it's a really good team. They clearly get the job done. Like you said, they've got the experience. It's not going to be easy, but, you know, I'll take the matchup over Arizona. Just, I don't know, for the simple fact that, yeah, it's a five seed instead of a one seed. So yeah. there's there's probably something there. They don't play a ton of bench minutes either, which is similar to us. They play more than we do, um, but but they don't play a lot of bench minutes. We do have them a little bit on the experience factor, but we're talking about teams that are top, you know, top, top 90 in experience. Um, and height is pretty much a wash. Uh, so they are, you know, they're, they're well-coached team. Kelvin Sampson's a hell of a coach. The one thing that I'm looking at on Kempom that I see that's interesting is that they're a partic- not a particularly good free throw shooting team. Hmm. I don't have the stats of what they shot today, but they're ranked 327. Oh, wow. In, yeah, they're in, terrible. Yeah. Um, averaging 66.7%. So if the game comes down to the wire, and it's close, which I would expect this game to come down to the wire. Free throws can make a difference in our favor. Um, and I just want to call that one out. I, I, I'll be honest here and say that, like, I, I wish I could tell you that I had a lot more and a quick reaction here to uh, to Houston. But I, I, I'm going to tip my cap to them. They, this is a really, really good team. This is the best by, um, by Ken Palm. This is technically the best team that we're going to face all year. Um, and, and will face all year because Houston's the best team remaining in the tournament per Ken Palm number two, Kansas, number five, Baylor for reference is number three. Uh, so, uh, so this is, this is the best team that we're going to face all year, which you'd expect you're going to play for the right to go to a final four. You expect to play the best teams, um, that are out there. So this is what you get. This is the team that just beat Illinois and, and, and Arizona. Yeah. Should it scare you? No, like you said. If you want to, you want to make the final four, you got to play good teams. It's reminiscent of what we had to go through in 16 and 18. You got to play top seeds to get it done. You know, ideally this is a similar outcome to our Kansas game, which I think Kansas was the number one seed in 2016. And obviously we just made that game really ugly. 
made it play to our pace. You hope Jay does the same thing here and hopefully the same outcome as well. Yep. Couldn't agree more. Um, okay. So I, I, I'm going to, that's kind of the end of my preview there. <laughs> I don't got, I don't have much else. I think this is just going to come down to, yeah, I think that I, I don't think it's a bad matchup. I, I, this is just an experienced team that's played well. We haven't faced a team like that in, in actually quite some time. Um, I, I, I struggle to produce an analog uh, for this team that we've played in, uh, in conference. The only thing that's calling out to me is Providence because of the experience factor. Mm. Um, and the fact that they have some size, but they don't blow you away with it. So, but, but even then, I mean, Ken, it's not even close on a Ken Palm level. So I, I struggle with a, a lot more than that, but I would say is this expectations have been met and surpassed this season. As far as I'm concerned, we made the Absolutely. elite eight. So, so I'm not saying this is going to be our last game. I'm not pessimistic. I'm not, a, I wouldn't say I'm overly optimistic, but like, we have accomplished the task. This team made the elite eight. Um, I just always call the sweet 16 as kind of the, um, uh, as the kind of the floor as to where you got to hit on a, a, when you have a good team like that, like, like we have this year, but made the elite eight to surpass expectations, won a big East tournament championship. Candidly was the best team in the big East conference throughout the regular season. You can't ask for much more on a season than what it is now. Do I smell a final four? Do I smell a potential national championship with Gonzaga and Arizona out the picture? Let's go. And, and am I saying, why not us? Yeah. I'm saying, why not us right now? But, totally. but Houston might have an answer for that question. Um, so, so, you know, this is going to be a tough game for the right to play for a final four. Do not look at the seed line next to this team. This is by all accounts, a top shelf team. Are you going to New Orleans if we win? I want to, I want to. I'm definitely going. So I yeah, I know, I know, I know the rules. I want to, as you know, I got to deal with the situation at home. So I got to figure out, um, and I'm, what I'm referring to is that we have some uh, uh, sick situation going on here. My do- my daughter's not my, uh, she's doing okay, but you know she's a little under the weather. Basically, so, basically you need to quit being a little bitch. And yeah, well, well, yeah, well. Just, did, did, t- 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 tell it to yeah. Melina, okay? Yeah, I will. I'll I'll, t- I'll, t- I'll tell it to Linda. I'll, I'll tell her. Guys, before we let the viewers go, I wanted to get really Chris's take, but we'll let Rob chime in here too. Um, Thanks, so we got the first Elite Eight game. Where that lines up all year, are you shooting like we want game one in the Elite Eight? We want the early game. We want the late game. Like, what are the vibes on the schedule time? I actually always prefer to get our game out of the way first. I like I've always been that way. Um, Like, not that I want the noon game on Thursday of the NCAA tournament, but like, like for the round of sixty four. But I definitely actually prefer to play a little earlier in the day and on Thursday. Uh, because I like to watch the full tournament kind of knowing what happened to us. So like when we win a round, I can watch the rest of that round with a lot of like comfort and confidence. Like, haha, you, you losers. You guys are still playing like a bunch of idiots. (laughs) That's exactly how I feel. That's exactly how I internalize it. I agree. And in the 16 final four, it was great to be in the arena. I didn't stay for the Syracuse, um, UNC game because I was like, oh, we're going to national championship. I don't care. I'm going to get barbecue. So it's sort of nice to if it's going to be a bad night, you know earlier. If it's going to be a good night, you know earlier. Exactly. Exactly. Uh, um, Brian. Yes. That being said, we have a team in the Elite Eight from the Big East. Now. Big East. Yeah, yeah. So two two Sweet Sixteen teams, one Elite Eight team at least. Is this a successful year? So one Elite Eight team is a success for a mid major, no matter what. Okay, I'll Jesus always Christ. say that. Two Elite Eight teams would be would be huge. Three in the Sweet 16 would have been nice. I wouldn't have, like, thrown a parade. I wouldn't have put up a banner, but I would have been like, okay, a little golf clap. Two teams in the Sweet 16 proves that the Big East is a mid-major that happens to have Muhammad Ali in it, which is cool when you're Muhammad Ali, but when you're fighting the dude who's the first guy on Mike Tyson's punch-out who, like, falls down every game, it's not doing us too much good. I hate you. Uh, no, I mean, this is, this is, it's, you ignored me for an entire weekend because of this. <laughs> Terrible. I hate you so much. The problem going to win tomorrow, baby. I hope so. <laughs> I love it. All right. Rob, you're fading. 
I can tell it's one ten. I mean, Eastern. it's one. Yeah, it's one o'clock in the morning, and I've yeah. been drinking all night. We got a we got a we got a Friday to have here. I have a whole day of fucking work ahead. So, Not doing uh, that. but some games tomorrow night um, to be excited for Kansas and Providence. Uh, that's the one game that I'm gonna have my eyes feasted on. I'm gonna be very intently watching that game. Uh, but thank you everybody for listening, and as always, let's go Nova. <laughs>